Welcome to Unhacked. I'm Brian Graff, Senior Vice President of Business Development here at Abacode. We're here every week to provide you with the biggest hacking stories in cybersecurity and give you tips to help prevent those hacks from happening to you. As always, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. So this week on Unhacked, uh, Pulse Connect Secure may have been used to breach several federal agencies. So federal agencies first reported back in April that an attack was detected uh, using the Pulse Connect Secure VPN solution. Uh, according to federal agencies, this attack has been going on for months, but was just first detected last month. This attack used Pulse Connect's VPN service uh, to access federal agency networks while customers were on the network. 12 agencies, uh, as of today, used the service, and the extent of the breach is still unknown. Pulse has said that very few systems have actually been affected, and they have released a hotfix for the issue. So before we start talking about this attack, what is a VPN? A VPN is a solution that encrypts data over the internet so that in theory, only the uh, sender and the recipient can read that, um, read those messages. Um, they use public and private key encryption. We'll go farther into that in, in a future episode of Unhacked, but basically it's a type of encryption where only you have the key to unlock uh, that to that message. And by having that key, everyone else knows that you are who you say you are. Um, Public private key encryption is used ubiquitously um, and has exploded due to COVID because of remote work, uh, VPNs are used to access networks uh, securely. Um, when setting up VPNs, key management is, is essential because once a hacker has your private key, they can pretend to be you and read all your, read all your messages. Uh, agencies believe that is what ha that's what happened with Pulse Connect is that uh, attackers were able to access the private keys. So this attack brings up the topic of vendor security. Um, what should a vendor like Pulse Security have done in this situation to help prevent such an attack? Well, IT vendors of government agencies are required to comply with laws such as FedRAMP and CMMC. So if Pulse was providing uh, VPN as a cloud service, they were required to uh, undergo FedRAMP certification. If they are just accessing government data or just providing the software, they are required to comply with CMMC. These laws require software and web service providers to ensure their products are secure, including uh, developing a secure coding plan, testing and review changes to software prior to implementation, uh, implementing security awareness training for your developers so they know how to, how to develop code securely, perform static analysis code scans. So this is a vulnerability scan of the code itself to make sure that there are no insecure uh, code in, in your code base and then performing vulnerability scans, which are dynamic scans. So the difference between static code scan is that you're just scanning the code as is, whereas a vulnerability scan on the web application or the application itself is a dynamic scan. You're trying to get into the application as it's running. So these are just a few things that Pulse Secure and any government vendor uh, should be doing to make sure that their systems are secure. Now, these uh, mechanisms do not 100% guarantee that there's never going to be a flaw or a vulnerability in a, in a product or a service. So on the customer side, there's also some things that customers need to do to make sure uh, to, they can minimize an attack like this. So on the customer side, what the government agencies should be doing is they are required to assess products pr prior to implementation. So I'm sure that they did some sort of assessment of uh, Pulse Secure prior to onboarding it. Um, you should be using vendor security checklists, which are basically a list of, of a compliance standard and, and asking a vendor, how do you comply with this? How do you comply with these access control requirements? How do you comply with these change control requirements? How do you comply with these incident response and business continuity requirements? You want to hear from the vendor, what is their program? How, do they, how are they making sure that this system is secure and going to be available? Um, they should be customers of, in the Government agencies should make sure that security awareness training includes remote access security practices and includes making sure people understand that when they're in these systems, they need to be vigilant. They need to make sure if there's something that looks weird or um, is they don't understand that they need to respond to uh, the IT department or be given a number or an email address to report incidents. Uh, they have to understand that 
security is everyone's responsibility and you may be the first person to see an incident and you have to report it. Um, make sure you segment VPN uh, ingress via DMZ. So the great thing about VPN is it allows your workers to, to work from home or anywhere. However, you wanna make sure that those that ingress from VPN isn't coming in from all over the place. You want to restrict that access point to a minimum because you want to be able to monitor uh, ingoing and outgoing access, and it's easier to do if it's all going into one place. Uh, and then make sure you're using a SIM uh, to gather the logs from your VPN concentrator from your systems and make sure that you can detect whether there's an unusual activity at the perimeter and then if there's unusual activity going on within your systems. You want to make sure that you're detecting that unauthorized access, but you may not always be able to do that. So the next best thing is to be able to determine that there's unauthorized activity going on inside your network and only a SIM can do that. So uh, in closing about vendor security, uh, most companies are both vendors and customers and you're never going to have complete control over your systems or data. You're going to have vendors that are administering uh, some of your systems. You're going to have customers uh, that can access portals. Uh, companies are more connected now than they ever were before, and they, they will only get more connected as time goes by. So both vendors and, and customers uh, can implement security programs using the standards that are written uh, with the assumption that both vendors and customers will make mistakes. So your security program should be heavy on monitoring, heavy on remediation, making sure you're able to respond to incidents once they occur, because you know that no matter what you put in place, hackers are going to hack, there's going to be malware, there's going to be incidents that occur. You want to be able to ensure that you can respond to them. Uh, and make sure if you are a customer, uh, make sure that your vendor has been assessed, that they either um, have filled out a questionnaire and have uh, satisfactorily answered questions about their security, or they've been independently assessed. Uh, they've had an auditor go on and go on site and um, actually look at their system and make sure that, they, that it's secure. These are things that a customer can do to make sure prior to purchasing a system and then ongoing, uh, make sure that system is secure. So that's all we have for today. Again, I'm Brian Graff with Abacode, and this is Unhacked, and we will see you next week.